Hey, right then, introducing a whole new project to Custom Works. It is this Land Rover. Dun, 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 dun. So what we're doing to this Land Rover is, just here, we've marked out a square, and this is gonna be like an electric drawer that comes out the side of the things that will go like, it'll have a cover there and it'll go like to about there. And it's gonna have all your cooking equipment, all your stuff under there, but it'll press with a button, then it'll go back in. And that's gonna go right in. And it, it sort of it fits in. In these, you've got like two benches and then a bit. So it will like have a bench just behind the front seats and that's where the box will be. But there's a gap like this. And it's where the footwell would have been if this had been like the four door version. And uh, that's sort of the space it takes up. So you get all of this super cooking thing with no actual loss of space inside. So we'll be doing that. So first up, let's get this cut out and see what else we've got to take out behind that. So we have cut this panel out of the side of this Land Rover and this is where we're going to put this massive drawer that's going to slide out and have all the cooking stuff on it. So, first cut the hole, then see the problems. Um, so in here we have got a um, huge body mount here. That's going to have to go, but the box we're going to put in is going to be made of um, two mil stainless steel, so that will um, that will provide a you know real strong uh, sort of box in here. So we've got this. Um, I think one of these is probably the only other one, and uh, uh, we'll have to reroute those um, somehow out of the way. Um, I'm not too sure where, but this is we want to come off of this. Off of this chassis member, over to the other chassis member, right over there, uh, and that will hold the box. And uh, yeah, it'll come out. Uh, it'll come out of here. So that's what we're doing. Let's get to it and uh, see what we can chop away. To get it in, I'm going to have to cut a lot of this out. Now this is the level I want it to be at, so I might also have to cut that out. I don't know but I need to cut all this out so that it forms like a horseshoe shaped bench on the inside which I'll film in a second um, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and cut to this um, floor support just here and cut all the way across to the other uh, chassis rail in order to uh, remove that bit but first what I'm going to do I'm just going to nip through this front and back with the angle grinder then hopefully I'll be able to mark it on the inside and then cut through the floor with the sawzall Okay then, so I've put these uh, marks with the angle grinder from the underside just so that I can create this line and I know that by this runner we're sort of about above the other chassis rail. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this out and, uh, and then we'll get to the next bit which I think we're going to have to cut um, quite a lot of other bits out. Anyway, here we go. through that bit of floor and um, now we've got a mark up for the other areas we need to cut out to get this massive stainless steel box in to fit the drawer in.
in here, um, we've got this body mount and that's going to be in the way of uh, what we're doing. So we're going to cut that body mount off and then uh, we'll be able to get the box in. Now, the box is going to be in quite a heavy gauge. I think, I think it's going to be three mil. So the box itself will support all of this. And to be honest, once the box is in here, there's not a lot to support because what this would have been supporting has now gone. So we've still got good support there and we've got this really hench cross member just there. So we've not really took any support out of the floor at all, really. Right, and so the Sawzall's an unbelievable piece of kit, but it didn't really cut it, so we've got to go nine inch grinder to get this out. Now, just to say this is a diesel model. If this is one of the petrol models, I would have moved those two fuel lines. But as it's diesel, I should think we'll get away with this. There's gonna be a lot of sparks, a lot of noise. That body mount is not long for this world. Uh, this is the box that fits in the side of the Land Rover that we've been making and it's going to slide out, it's going to have a sink and a little cooker. So you pull up, press a button and there it is. Nice little kitchen to use. So we've fabricated this stainless steel box, which is very tough. And inside the stainless steel box, actually I haven't fabricated the stainless steel box. I've had this stainless steel box fabricated because it's in 2 mil stainless and I've not got a folding machine that will fold, well I've not got a folding machine, so. <laughs> um, flange bolts up to the flat side of the Land Rover, and this rivets to the flat side of the Land Rover. So, this is a box, and we are obviously missing a side on the box. And we need a front that covers this. Now the front's gonna stick out a bit, because we've got room essentially. Um, the flared wheel arch on the Land Rover sticks out about that far. They're probably going to come out about that far. And it gives us room for our large electrical actuator that will fit in there. Uh, it's going to cover that. And we've got to loads of room for this to stick out. And uh, that will push and it will all come out. Leave that in there because we'll be forming over that. And I want to leave plenty of room so I can get a bracket on the back of this which is going to be a fiberglass panel so let's get to it let's make this cover panel we're going to make a mold and everything so we can make it over and over again this box actually we've got um i've done full autocad drawings for it so we can make it over and over again this is something that we hopefully will repeat in making so let's get to it let's get to the i want to say let's get to the workshop but i admit i'm already here let's get to the workbench I'm also quite close to. This is going to be the base for the thing to shut up to. So it's going to close up to there. On this little upstand here, we've got a rubber seal, like a boot seal. You've got to take that into um, consideration that part, part of the fiberglass has got to fit up to that. So this seal's nice because you don't want your, I don't know, your tin coffee getting damp or something. Bond. I'm going to stick it on like that. It goes round here, nice mitered corners, and sits so all the way around. But got to come higher than the top of this actuator. Some of these aren't quite level, so I should level those up and then put a, um, a top piece on here that will form the front of the box. And then I'll probably try to remove this. I need this to stay exactly to these dimensions, though. I don't need it to move 
or have any sort of wobble in it or anything like that. Because when it is on the on the van, it needs to go up and and just fit nicely. So this is um this is boot seal that you have around the boot of a car. And what we need is for when this pulls back on the actuator, we need a piece of something, a piece of this just to put pressure onto that so it forms a seal. So what I'll be doing is making a secondary flange on the inside of here that meets up to that and, and puts, you know, like a, an, a, a modicum of pressure on it. I don't want it to be like, I don't want it not to touch it. I want it just so it's got that bit of pressure. So we'll form a secondary rebate inside of there that closes up to that. Quite how I'm going to make this all in a fiberglass mould, I've not worked out yet because it's like a two-sided thing. But I'm sure all of that will come, uh, you know. Right, so I've got the, uh, the seal on there, and that's fitted on. Everything's good. I'm going to put the other bit back on and then try and make a piece that fits inside and lines up with this seal, or something like that anyway. We've got this uh, outer panel, we've uh, sort of made it up. I've run around it a little bit with the grinder to tidy it up, but there's a lot more work, you know, this is going to have lots of, some detail on it. Um, when it's finished, it's going to be finished in like a Raptor finish. On the inside, we've got this level here that pushes up against there. And at the moment, that is quite soft. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a Put the around the outside of here, something like that. And what that'll do, it'll give me a little bit more pressure on the uh, on the seal. Also, cloak in this gap. Pretty cool, but uh, we can't just leave the front um, flat. It's got to have some sort of a sort of moulding to it and as we're going to make a mould off of this then don't matter how intricate it is because it would just be in the mould it'll just come out over and over again so what I'm thinking I've got some strips of dye bond so I think if they go on something like this little ones there and then in this corner now have this square, also with this shape, this, and then like a, a depiction of what's inside. So that's like a little sink and a little cooker. Uh, front and back, fits on the box, fits perfectly to the shape of that stainless steel flange 
that's going to be on the outside of the body. And, oh yeah, that is the spring of the seal. Sealing that in so that, um, I don't know, no dust is going to get on your tea bags or anything like that. Uh, so we're getting the runners in and uh, we've bolted them through. What we've done, we've drilled all the way through and that was quite difficult because we had to mark it from the inside but we've now got the runner in and we've packed the runner off by 8mm just so that as it comes past this seal that seals the lid there's no interference there. We've uh, screwed it through, washes both ends and we've uh, knotted and lock knotted it just so it never vibrates loose. But there it is, runs very nice and that's one end. Time to do the other one. This just isn't quite big enough for me to fit in to get to the other side of the screw. So no, no. Anyway, let's get to it. To get these into there, and so that they clear that rubber, we're going to use a load of washers together. And we're using what, one, two, three, four, five washers together to give us an eight mil gap uh, to stand it off. Now, we have glued all these together with some contact adhesive. And what I'm going to do is super glue those to the back of the runner um, just so that when we go in, it's really tight to get in there and get the screw through. All I'm doing is holding it up, screw through and in. I'm not going to go one, two, three, four, five washers, or the washers are falling about. It's a whole nightmare, you know, scenario. All I'm going to do is glue those on there, and then nice and easily in, straight through, sorted. That's it, runner is in, these are super heavy duty, look at that, runs really smooth, really nice, and we've bolted it through, then we've put a nut on, and then we've put a lock nut on afterwards. Looking pretty good, what I'm going to do now is just grind these bolts off so when it slides into the body of the car, nothing gets in the way, hopefully, fingers crossed. There's a little bit of sort of piecing together and finding, finding a feet on this. We've had to cut and weld this frame a few times. As you can see, this runner sits on the angle. That's just the shape of the aperture we've got. And we wanted to use every last millimetre of space that we've got between the chassis and the top of the benches in the back of the Land Rover. If you've got a Land Rover, they've got all these benches in the back. And we want to just make a continuation of that bench behind the, the uh, front bulkhead, behind the front seats. So, this now moves in and out. We've got it on this enormous uh, actuator. And also, it's electronically operated, but there'll be split pins here and at the back so that you can just disconnect the um, actuator. You know, just imagine the scenario. Uh, I don't know, you're out somewhere, you have some sort of power failure, but you've still got gas in here, you can still make a cup of tea, but you've got no power. You can remove the pin, it will still slide out by hand, you can make a cup of tea. So here it is, here's the operation of it going in. And of course when that stops, um, inside uh, the actuator that I've used has got a micro switch inside so when it does come to a stop it's not like just winding and winding and winding. If I recreate, if I recreate reconnect the power there, you know, there's nothing, the micro switch has cut it off. much to do with hot rods. The whole thing in this, like the operation of the actuator, uh, the slide, you, know, you might want to slide the roof on a car. Well, I did similar stuff to this on Cosmotron to open that cool down. So there's lessons to be learned. So we've got like the inner, the hob and everything goes in there. I'll just get that and show you. So this cool hob cell fits into here like this. And you've got uh, room for storage under here, and then of course this is like a little sink and cooker. And this whole thing slides out of this box. We've got this in, it fits, 
things open and don't catch all the, the stuff, these seals and stuff. Um, but we have got a problem. There's a motor sits on the side of the actuator. Trying to torch down, but you can see there's a motor on the side of the actuator, and that sits a little bit proud of the actuator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a piece of steel out of here, just so that that clears it. And hopefully this will slide all the way in, because at the minute we're stopping about 15 mil off its full sort of movement backwards. So let's get that done. It's not going to be nice. Right, so that's that cut out, so let's see once more if this slides in and out under its own steam. For that, you're going to have to wait until next week. So that's it for this week. Uh, don't forget to click subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section, give us a big thumbs up and click the bell icon. No, you're a bell icon. Anyway, that's it for this week. Next week we'll be finishing off that crazy electric drawer in the Land Rover. And then the week after that, we have got a really cool Austin A40 custom pickup truck build starting then. So join us for all of that. In the meantime, uh, goodbye and thank you very much and good night.